Hi, my name is Mark. Uh, welcome to Valley View Retreat, our wonderful home here in the Sierra de las Nieves Mountains in Andalusia in southern Spain. Today's video is going to be about our loo, which you can just about see there behind me, just here. Uh, we use a form of composting toilet. Um, there are many forms of composting toilets and the one that we use is the one that's worked really well for us for the last 15 years. So I don't know if you can actually see this here but it's basically a box and on that box we have a toilet lid and over here we have a clear plastic bucket and in that bucket we would normally keep wood shavings and the wood shavings are what are used to put on top of the, the solids. The system that we use is a, a urine separating system. So this part here means that when you sit down, the fluids go down here and they come out that tube there and join into our grey water system and the solids go into a bucket down here. Um, that bucket is usually a 25 litre to 30 litre bucket and in that we have a 50 litre biodegradable bag. Um, having the biodegradable bag means that when we go to empty the bucket, we just put a lid on the bucket, take it down to the compost heap, tie the bag up, take it out, put it on the compost, take the bucket back and it's perfectly clean so we can put a new bag in it, two inches of wood shavings in it, put it in and we're ready to go again. For two people, this system, you would only need to change the bucket maybe once every five or six weeks. You really don't need to change it any more than that. Okay. Okay, so here we are at the um, compost heap and you can actually see down here some of the green bags, um, the compostable bags. It takes about four months or so for the compostable bags to break down um, and then within a couple of months after that they disappear entirely. This here mound um, represents a uh, year's worth of human manure that came out of our composting toilet. Um, we move the mound maybe every year, year and a half or so. So what we're actually left with then, after it's all um, broken down, is this. I don't know if you can actually see that, but that's what we're left with after about a year and a half. This is where the, the last one was. You can see this vaguely just see some some little green in there from the compostable bags, but it certainly doesn't bother the doesn't bother the plants. Um, for this type of composting toilet, the system that I would recommend is that you have one area that you put everything in for a year, and then move to another area not so far away, and use that for a year. By the time that second one is full the first one will be compost that's actually ready for you to use and you can go back and start you know take the compost out and go back and use that mound again okay so let's have a, a look at the rest of the, the system the the urine separating part of it really does make a huge difference it means that the capacity for smells is reduced dramatically and um, the drier the solids are the less smell there will be so in order to make sure that the solids remain as dry as possible and to kill any potential for, um, I might just show you what I'm doing, I'm just taking the lids off, uh, any potential for smells, for noxious smells, um, what we do is I build, when I build the box, I build the box with two compartments. Yeah. So this side over here, it's got the the pipe work for the uh, urine separator and it's also where the bucket will actually go. Let me take that off. Put that over here. And now if you look into the box you'll actually see that there are two holes. There's a hole here and there's a hole there. And into that goes, oh, I don't want to move because I've only just redone the thing, but here we go. Goes this conduit. Yeah. So this conduit goes through this hole here, into this hole here, and then it's actually sealed. And you can actually see that this entire compartment has been sealed with spray foam. 
and the reason that it's sealed with spray foam is to make it as airtight as possible. Um, we're trying to make it airtight because, I don't know if you can see this wall socket here, attached to the end of the conduit we have a computer fan, a 12 volt computer fan that's used for cooling uh, computers or laptops. And what that does is it draws air through the conduit from this compartment. It draws the air from this compartment and this compartment is sealed so that the only place that they can actually draw air from, hang on a second. So it draws the air from that compartment and the only place that it can draw the air from is underneath this lid. So it draws the air from the bathroom into this compartment and then sucks it out up the conduit and the conduit exits a meter above the roof line of the house. And what that means is that, first of all, in the bucket with the solids, air has constantly been pulled over it. And because it is, the solids dry out really, really quickly. And the faster you can dry those solids, the faster the composting will start once you put on the compost heap. But also the less likely you are to have any smells. Uh, the urine separator, uh, if you're using a urine separator, it doesn't have a U-bend. It can't do because the only thing that would get caught in the U-bend would be urine because we're not actually using any water with this toilet. So rather than have a U-bend, it exits directly into the wastewater, the, the grey water system. And so there's always a potential that some smell would come back from that. But because the air has constantly been drawn into the box, no smell can actually escape. The smell goes out the conduit and up over the ridge line of the house. So it's completely odorless. It's a completely odorless system. The fan that we're using is a 12 volt, a uh, little 4 inch 12 volt fan that runs off this and it runs constantly 24 hours a day. So I've used those fans for the last 15 years and basically 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, they need replacing maybe once every 4 years. They're made to last really, really well. Um, it's just into the end of the conduiting um, with some padding around it, make sure that no air gets in. So really replacing it is a 10 minute job. Um, and when the fan stops working, you know, instantly you know, because you, you can immediately start to get a, some smell. It's slight, bearing in mind that we've actually separated out the urine, and once you've separated the urine on the solids, the, the smell or potential for smell is reduced massively really massively uh, but it, when, when the fan stops working you know straight away so it's just a matter then of keeping them in stock that costs about five five euro um, I get them on Amazon and I just replace it and that's it it's fine again for another four years so the only consumable that we have is the um, toilet paper obviously and the uh, the wood shavings and we buy the wood shavings in bales. Um, I'll show you a photograph of the bale. And those wood shavings are normally used for bedding for the likes of rabbits. Uh, I've seen some places on, on Amazon where they sell them for like 20 euro a bale. We get a bale for 6 euro in our local, um, our local feed, uh, feed store. And that six euro bale lasts us a year. It's a compressed bale, vacuum packed, um, and literally it will last us for a year. So that's the system that we use. I've heard of all kinds of other composting systems, composting toilet systems, dry toilets. Um, and we tried a, a couple, we even had a commercial separate toilet, which is a brand name, and it's a Scandinavian make. Uh, which is fine, has built-in fan and has a built-in agitator and urine separating and all of that. Uh, and it became, it was made of plastic. It was fine, worked fine. Um, the main issue that we had with it was that it discolored. It was white when it started off and when plastic starts to discolor, it, it starts to look yellow and disgusting. And we painted it a couple of times, but then the paint would peel off. And really, this box system that we use is so easy. It's constructed out of um, a framework of two by one inch timber and then just tongue and groove over the whole thing and, and, and that's it, it's done. 
do you make the entire thing, including buying the urine separator and the buckets? The whole thing probably costs 70 euro. Uh, the, uh, as a matter of interest, the separate toilet that we bought first cost us 2,600 euro, and that was 16 years ago. So it uh, may not look as traditional as a, a, another toilet, but it's really, really effective and very, very cheap to make. And um, because we're using two the 25 liter buckets, the toilet tends to be higher than a standard toilet would be. So we normally put a, a step, a little step, be a plastic or a box that you can put your feet up on. Apart from that, making the whole thing more comfortable, it's apparently much better for you um, to have your knees raised above the level of your hips when you're pooing, something to bear in mind. Okay, I hope you found that interesting and not too disgusting. Um, I'll catch you again next week. Take care. Bye-bye.